This is Linda, for those who do not know. <laughs> and she's going to tell us a little bit about her work. Do you want to tell us uh, how you got started, Linda? Uh, sure. Well, um, hmm. I actually remember when I was 18 years old, I, just, I committed myself to being an artist, which I didn't even know what that really meant. But I just knew that I wanted to devote my life to, um, to uh, painting. And so I did a little ritual where I put a actually a little gold wedding ring around a paintbrush. <laughs> I know it's silly, but, um, but anyway, uh, I went to Otis for a while and then Cal State Northridge. And then I, you know, I was, I was a writer for a while. I wrote for Art Week. And very early in my career, I was kind of involved in the LA art scene. So it was really kind of exciting. But then at that point, and I was doing large scale abstract paintings, but I really wanted to learn how to draw, and so I went to Art Center so I could learn the craft of Renaissance drawing. So I had, have had a really classical education. Of you know, we would study uh, Renaissance composition and drawing, and uh, so it was pr figure drawing, a lot of figure drawing. So, and then I met my mentor, Lars Feidelson, um, who was really, I think, the person, the artist teacher in my life that was the most important one. And he was a California pioneer modernist, Jeff, you know his work, and his wife, Helen Lundeberg. And we got to be friends, and we hung out, and we would have like wild artist parties. We were all dressed up as like a figure from um, some painting. It was, really, it was really fun when I was a student. We had a good time. And uh, right, I think right when I graduated, or before I graduated, I was in a cooperative gallery with my teachers. Hi, hey, Margaret. Hi, welcome. There's one chair if anybody uh, wants the chair. So. And feel free at any time if you guys have questions. Oh, please. Yes, this is like a Q&A, very informal. I mean, I don't know. We're just, I'm just kind of like videoing it. But you know, don't be self. I'm a little self-conscious, but don't be. And if you have a, any question, just you know, go whatever. Because it's really, what, I, what I'd like to do today is talk about my art. and. To, you know, show you a little bit about m where I'm coming from, and like I'd like to extol the virtue of what painting is, and about um, kind of the thread of history and of what art is, and to understand more about it, and how you could perhaps in your own life understand painting more or use it for your own art. Because I know there's some artists here in the room besides me. So um, anyway, so Lorser was my mentor so supportive of women artists and really, you know, got me and taught me all about uh, composition and these things about how you arrange uh, the structure of a canvas that I never even thought about or knew about and, it, and color and everything. So it was very exciting. And then, um, so then I started teaching at Art Center and then uh, started, uh, then I traveled with this artist, Arthur Secunda, and got to meet all these people in Europe. The director of the Museum of Modern Art, William Rubin, and Kenneth Noland, and these gallerists in Paris and Switzerland. So it was very exciting to really be living the life of an artist, which is what I chose to do, you know, to live that life. And I'm very happy, a lot of rewards. So my work has always been, um, the, I think the first trip with Arthur Secunda in, was to southern France, and I wasn't really doing landscape before then, but I li we lived on a farm in southern France uh, near where Van Gogh lived, and everything was moving and swirling when the, the mistral, the wind, would come up, and I really understood why Van Gogh painted those, you know, swirling, he didn't make them up, it really looked like everything was alive, and which is interesting because many, many years later, in the 90s. Um, hey, Renee. Hi there. Hi. This is very informal, so, you know, hello. OK. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. Welcome. So, um, so anyway, um, yeah, so, so this was in the 70s. And I remember having a painting of my, a show of my paintings at the Colors of the Wind kite shop which was perfect because, you know, the wind, kites, and it was actually a great store on Main Street. Does anybody remember that store, Colors of the Wind? No, it was amazing. Uh, anyway, so, so 
20 years later, I started working with this shaman, uh, Don Miguel Ruiz, and that what the whole thing was about the aliveness, the life force that inhabits nature and how that moving energy, and as we know now, you know, quantum physics, everything is alive and has consciousness. So it was very interesting that I kind of was feeling it at that time, and it's been a thread in my work, the flow, the rhythm, the movement, and um, I think also color, you know, just the love of color came from around that time. I remember uh, as a student, my paintings were all like black, white, gray, brown, you know, olive green, that's all I painted. And then I was so sick of those colors that finally, like, I just like, this, you know, reds, yellows, greens, orange, you know, the more color, the better. So, um, so anyway, so this series, so in this series uh, started really, the first painting here is, um, I think it's this one. And, uh, there was this one, and then in, in, in my catalog, um, which I'm very proud of, let me go show you, because I'm just proud of it. I just created this catalog, which was a, a really a labor of love. But um, this painting, actually here, was the first painting in the series, the big painting in the series. And I did, uh, Chris and I went to North, North Yorkshire and it's just stunning landscape. It's just really beautiful. David Hockney did a lot of paintings there. And I was so intrigued by this one particular tree. And it doesn't look anything really like this at all. But it, does it, Chris? No, not at all. So, but it had yellow flowers and it just the way it flowed and moved in the wind. I just fell in love with this tree. So for the next like four years, that's all I did was paint trees and trees not only this tree but kind of this this is a seed tree but this tree you know this is kind of like if this is like a day that's night version and then this is a vertical version and and then in each one get trying to get the feel of the flow the movement the rhythm and um, and this one uh, was an earlier one a few couple years ago and I was really trying to get that kind of fluid feeling in the blues, like an evening scape. When I did this one, I was kind of like so crazy. It was like the colors just took me over and it was um, such an expressionistic experience. And what I mean by that, a lot, like this painting is more calm and it was a very meditative experience when I painted it. In this one, it was like I felt possessed by the gods and goddesses when I painted it. It was just a very like, uh, more color. And I had to stop because I just know I was going to just go crazy with it and the show was coming up. So I thought I better not like, but I could go further with this, you know, like lime green. And I had lots of ideas. So maybe the next one. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Well, um, I start off with these paintings on the floor. So I just put, put them I've, on my studio, I put them on the floor and I use very thin paint, light watercolor. And I start from a sketch. I do actual drawings in nature from the subject matter, from the tree. I think this one is a, a synthesis of the Yorkshire tree. Santa Monica, Italian mountains, and Malibu. And I just kind of mix them up. I, so they're not, it's not really a specific location. There's nowhere on the planet that really looks like that. Um, so I put it down on the floor. I have my sketch. And also I've taken photographs too of these different places. And then I just start, you know, I put on my like crazy loud music and, um, maybe David Bowie, I don't know, and something very wild. <laughs> and I just start throwing the paint on the floor, just letting it, and then I like lift it up, I let it drip, and a little secret that I don't, most people don't know, I use a hair dryer. And the hair dryer creates these like amazing kind of edges, and I can control the edges with the hair dryer. So I have, I just do this, and I kind of lift it up, move it around, hair dryer, and then, um, I let it just sit 
And then sometimes I just like it like that, but I, I put a, I used to do more abstract things, and Kate knows my abstract watercolors that I've done. But anyway, so then I put it up on the, the wall or the easel, and I just look at it, and I look at my sketch, and I let that sketch inform me. I look at the photographs, and but I also look what I at what I've created. So it's this like, you know, synthesis of all these different things. So I'm actually like very. It's a you know, you talk about being in the now moment. Um, it's a very present experience with this, and it's. I go into, Carol understands, I go into this place of just being so present with the work. I mean, hours can go by. So, um, and then another thing that started happening in this one, which is kind of new, is this kind of spatial thing, almost like neo-cubistic, where I'm playing with the inter, you know, the space coming in and out. And as you can see, it's very abstract at, to at the top. So I start looking at that. I, leave I love to leave some of the very thin layers underneath. I love to leave. It's kind of like showing the trail, showing my process. I really enjoy having some of the charcoal lines there, showing the process. And um, it was really interesting, because before I did the talk, I, was, I had to read my um, artist statements from the last few years so I can remember, remember to say something. And what I realized is that um, at one phase of my life I did a series of landscapes looking out of windows. And I realized when I look at this, where if you can see this painting, there's these like kind of like vertical lines in the piece. And that one, I thought it was something new and it is because I'm thinking about the idea that we live in the multidimensional universes. I mean, there is, I firmly believe that we live in, in this universe, but there's like infinite amount of universes going on at all the same time, and infinite dimensions. And so in this one, it's like we're bleeding through into the other dimensions. And I think nature is so important to, because when we're connected to nature, we're connected to the life force energy. So in nature, I think you can go through the portals easier than if you're like in, you know, your house watching TV or something like that. You know, you're connected to the real essence of life. So um, I think that's what hap is happening in those paintings. And then um, if you want to turn around again to look at, this is my most recent work, which have you noticed there's no trees in it? <laughs> because I'm really right now interested in mountains so I'm just beginning to love the idea of mountains. And Chris and I were in this place called Fanghetto, which is right on the Italian-French border in the Alps Maritime. And we lived in a medieval village for a couple of weeks. A friend of ours gave us a villa to live in, this, I mean, funky, rustic villa, but it was pretty cool. We're surrounded by mountains, and that's the Roya River. And it was just a very... Um, powerful, beautiful, magical place. And so I'm really into um, these, uh, the landscape, the mountainscapes now. And um, I think that the large pieces, there are a lot of large pieces because Michael really had inspired me to do big pieces for the show. It's been really, you know, fun doing the show here. Uh, and I really love the way it looks on the white walls. It's, very, it's a very nice experience. So, yes. I have a question about the tree imagery. And because I see two trees, or is it the same tree that you look at and describe in duality? Well, um, you mean two, that there, the one tree is well, like. In each of these, I see two. The two, okay, well. So, okay, that's really interesting that you're saying that. First of all, that first tree that I saw in Yorkshire was like a double tree. It had. Um, like two, like kind of sprouts or you know trunks that kind of went like that, and and then Chris and I live. We've been together for 14 years in a long distance relationship, so it's kind of like here we are, you know, separate, but yet there's this togetherness in our souls. So I think that's what that imagery is about the tree, which I didn't really know what it was. It's sort of like I was looking at it and I go, that really could be what it's about. This. Oh, good, that's on. 
being in your studio every week and seeing the process, but sometimes I've seen figures and you're at tree trunks. Yes. A female figure or, you know, it's, it's almost like just two people communicating together yeah. in a relationship. Yeah. I think that's really true, and you, I don't think you guys can see this blue painting that's in the back, but that, um, well, you know, when you get up later, you can see it, but that painting came after my dance teacher, Jill Strauss, modeled for me, and I didn't realize it, but it was really about her, the movement of her body and her, you know, her, the movement in that, tr so it's like, and I actually had an idea of doing figures in the landscapes. And, you're a dancer too. and I'm a dancer too. I mean, not a real dancer, just a fun dancer. Where's Barbara? <laughs> Barbara's a real dancer. She's, <laughs> she's a really good dancer, but we're in the same dance class. And Margaret and I used to dance together, and I'm coming back to that dance class too. But Margaret is a dancer too. Mm -hmm. So, um, but um, it is, I love kind of bringing that amorphic feeling into the work, biomorphic feeling into the work, I think is really cool. and. I had another uh, another uh, uh, model model for me, and I ha I kind of drew her as a tree a little bit. And you sent me that fabulous picture of Kate sent me this amazing picture on Facebook of like a tree that was a person. It was really cool. <laughs> yeah. And there's a new Well, the tree is an incredible symbol. Um, I read, I think I read that article too, uh, just recently about, I think it was actually in the article that you sent me, Kate, that trees are able to communicate with one another and they're able to, or maybe you sent it to me. You sent it to me. They can actually communicate with each other. They can communicate, like if a giraffe is going to eat their leaves, they can communi communicate to another tree and that all their roots are connected with the sequoias. It's really one tree, um, so their roots are all connected, so it is a beautiful metaphor for the oneness of humanity, you know, that how we really need to remember that we are one, we're all rooted together. The tree of life, also I've studied shamanism for many, many, many years, a lot of power journeys to Mexico, and um, it's a powerful experience, but the tree of, the tree is the shamanic tree, is a huge symbol in shamanism, and it symbolizes a, the, um, the underworld, which is the realm of the animal world, the middle world, which is the earth world, and the branches are the upper world, which is the realm of the gods and goddesses and angels. So I believe in, I believe in animals, I believe in the earth, and I believe in angels. So it makes sense that, you know, in a way, these, the tree symbolism is so, they're so rich. And it's also in the Kabbalah, the tree of life uh, is a symbol of, you know, all the, 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 actually the human body. And they say that a tree is most similar to a human being and that we're, we're upright, you know, connected earth, sky. Well, you know, it's just something I, yeah, I think that it's just sort of part of who I am, you know, and the, the and I, I did it, I'm not actively going on journeys anymore, you know, it's just sort of like, I think I've, you know, sort of feel, I kind of got what I needed to know from that, but I would say meditation is a huge part of my work, and I have a daily meditation practice that I do that really is, I feel Really, I feel what I want my work to be is a spiritual transmission of positive energies into the world. There's a lot of darkness and, as we know, really um, tension and dest destruction. And I just want to bring positive energy through my art into the world. And, you know, that's right now what I want to do. And uh, so I would say spiritual practice is very much a part of, I mean, I'm, after I kind of maybe go through that crazy phase with the painting, I really go into a meditative state and like really, 
I feel like if I'm going to be transmit, tra transmitting that energy, I have to be there myself. So I can only put into my painting what I'm able to really experience and perceive and express. So it's a... 